from New Delhi. You're watching DD India News Hour, India's voice to the world. I'm Sakal Bhatt and coming up in the next hour. India's ruling dispensation BJP releases its election manifesto for parliamentary polls, promises one nation, one election and uniform civil code as well as vision for India's future under the leadership of current Prime Minister Narendra Modi. World leaders denounce Iran's strikes on Israel. India urges uh, immediate de-escalation and calls for diplomacy. UN Security Council to hold meeting at Israeli regime's request after Iran's strike. Israel presses to designate the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps a terror outfit. And uh, Palaguli of India secures bronze medal in women's 10-meter air pistol in Rio de Janeiro qualifies for 2024 Olympics. So let's begin with the show uh, with the latest on the world's largest democratic elections in India. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday released the BJP's manifesto for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. The ruling party has pledged to create jobs, boost infrastructure and expand welfare programs. Tripti gets its more. The Bharti Janta Party has released its much-awaited manifesto for the General Assembly elections 2024. The BJP's manifesto, also known as the Sankal Patr, sets forth a vision for India's future under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, with a focus on women empowerment, youth upliftment and support for the underprivileged. It outlines schemes targeting the poor, youth, farmers and women. Our focus dignity of life. Our focus quality of life. Our focus हमारा फोकस निवेश से नौकरी निवेश से नौकरी पर भी है इस संकल्प पत्र में क्वांटिटी ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज और क्वालिटी ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज दोनों पर बहुत जोर दिया गया है Titled Modi ki guarantee for the forthcoming Lok Sabha elections, it comprises 30 promises. The key promises include free ration for the next five years under PM Garib Kalyan and Yojana. It retaliates its stand to draw uniform civil code and work on making one nation one election a reality. It also aims to expand Ayushman Bharat Yojana to cover senior citizens and bring transgender community under the ambit. It also focuses on construction of three crore houses and work towards cheap pipeline gas availability for the households. Free electricity to poor households under PM Suja Ghar Muft Bijli Yojana is also on the cards. The Modi Ki Guarantee Manifesto also promises to make three crore women Lakpati Didis. It also ensures women's health and well-being through prevention and reduction of breast cancer and focus on omitting cervical cancer. The BJP manifesto also promises to keep increasing the MSP of crops from time to time and launch indigenous Bharat Krishi satellite for farm related activities. It also guarantees to make India the third biggest economic power in the world and promises to ensure robust infrastructure along border. The Sankal Patra also pledges to implement strict law to stop misconduct in recruitment examinations. Pure desh ko. भाजपा के संकल्प पत्र का बहुत इंतजार रहता है और इसका एक बड़ा कारण है दस वर्षों में भाजपा ने अपने संकल्प पत्र के हर बिंदु को 
गारंटी के रूप में जमीन पर उतारा है Beyond domestic agendas the manifesto also promises of becoming a permanent member of the UNSC for the promote as trusted global partner and first responder leading the voice of global south establishment of IMEC to promote trade and trust revitalize bharat civilization monuments and preserve and promote the legacy of lord ram with modi ki guarantee the vision is set to transform the nation into a power hub of progress and prosperity Tripta Tripathi for DD India. And let's uh, try and analyze uh, the ruling dispensation BJP's uh, manifesto and the promises, uh, the poll promises rather that are on Anvil and we're very glad to have with us on uh, the show uh, Praful Ketka. He's editor, organizer uh, and joining us tonight. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ketka. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Namaste. Uh, your thoughts to begin with, the overall messaging uh, and has very inclusive but what do you think is the larger message see sakal uh, i think you know this releasing of this manifesto on 14th of april uh, that is uh, dr baba saheb ambedkar who is the uh, was the uh, drafting committee chairman of indian constitution mm. that itself is a very important message and under that this 30 uh, guarantees that uh, you know this uh, vision document uh, Uh, of of uh, the bjp gives uh, basically focuses on the theme uh, 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 two themes one is of course the modi's guarantee uh, it, it uh, speaks about the uh, last 10 years uh, you know the achievements and the delivery on the ground by this government uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time for the next 5 years this this uh, 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 vision document speaks about what kind of india they want to build for 2047 and uh, the, the theme of gyan that is garib uh, poor uh, yuva youth uh, annadata that is farmers and nari that is uh, women uh, around these four important categories uh, these various uh, uh, you know uh, uh, promises uh, that are made by the party uh and the manifesto prepared by uh, 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 under the you know the chairmanship of uh, uh defense minister mr rajnath singh hmm. uh, that has uh, you know uh, clearly articulated the rational it is a kind of logical extinction of what prime minister modi and his government has been doing for last 10 years hmm. uh remember such a uh, guarantee has been a catchword in in this election right. because uh, from from the uh, in opposition side also there is a word guarantee that is being used hmm. but hmm. the clear differentiating factor Uh, seems to be uh, the the uh, the the rational and the logic behind uh, giving those promises and guarantees here uh, modi uh, and uh, prime minister modi and modi ki guarantee hmm. that seems to be the differentiating factor because uh, he has gained that kind of credibility where very sections of society at larger level are trusting what he is saying or what he So if one has to draw right because at the end of the day we cannot uh, ignore to see this these poll promise, promises or guarantees through political prism so praful ji uh, if one has to strike a comparison with the opposition's quote and quote guarantee and modi guarantee See uh, uh, there are firstly we need to understand when it comes to uh, you know the track record uh prime minister modi can always say that you know what i have whatever i had promised uh, in 2014 or 19 already delivered and and there are many pluses for him to uh, you know uh, 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 to to uh, project on the other hand the opposition though while talking about you know that the money will be transferred to account or uh, 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 the, the 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 social justice will be uh, ensured the real question is why uh, or, or even for legalizing msp why wasn't it done earlier hmm. when 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 the opposition was in power uh, especially the upa uh, when um, uh, uh, ms sonia gandhi and rahul gandhi was at the helm of affairs why couldn't they deliver on the ground so there is there, there, there is a credibility uh, question rather than the promises also whenever you know the manifesto uh, is is being presented the key members who are associated with the opposition manifesto especially the congress party mm -hmm. they they uh, could not rationalize whatever they have promised you know wh wh where are they going to uh, get this money from 
Here, on the other hand, what, what uh, BJP's manifesto is trying to do, on the one hand, it is giving, as far as the poor are concerned, uh, maybe free ration or free health care, uh, but and and that is that is already done for last five years. But okay. at the same time, for youth, when it comes to the technology, when it comes to the uh, you know uh, uh, various uh, startup ecosystem, there is a more opportunity. Or or the schemes for women uh, like Lakpati Didi. Yes, you know, yes. These are more wealth creation opportunities rather than just. Paying money. So, Lakpati Didi and many uh, welfare schemes, uh, which also form a macro portion of the manifesto. And then you look at India's at the global positioning. Very interesting. A uh, very quick two questions. First, on the international image of India. Uh, interesting to find India prioritizing India as the voice of the global south. A. Uh, B. That promise of making India a permanent member of the UNSC. I think opposition haven't really talked about it at all. It's not their priority. See, uh, when it comes to the foreign policy, defense and strategic thinking, uh, BJP was always strong in its agenda, When, when uh, come, not just in, in terms of manifesto. We have seen that this from the nuclear test itself. BJP was very clear that we will not bow down, we will have independent foreign policy. And BJP successfully executed that. What Prime Minister Modi has done in the last five years uh, is from, you know, earlier uh, sloganering of non-alignment, we have moved to all alignment. We are we are aligning with everybody, but on, on our terms, on our interests. Mm. And that's why BG, now, now government can claim. And that's why this positioning of one, not just uh, that, you know, uh, we, are, we are talking about permanent membership. Uh, we are talking about the global uh, voice of uh, the South. Yes. Uh, and we are talking about claiming... Uh, you know, being host of Olympic uh, 2036. Mm. So, that there seems to be a clear-cut uh, picture how, uh, you know, uh, uh, India wants to project itself at the international level. And, and uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, uh, influence that, that we have witnessed, especially uh, during uh, G20 summit, uh, that, that, uh, that has clearly given the confidence uh, to the people that, uh, this is the government that can uh, deliver on that. Confidence side. to the people and do you think this must uh, be also as we speak uh, putting opposition in a very precarious space, they're calling it Jumla Manifesto, they may call it whatever they want to, but uh, that the stand government continues to reiterate on uniform civil code, by the way, with something which opposition has time and again politicized, uh, plus one nation, one election promise. Uh, yes, uh, see, uh, uh, when, when it, uh, and this has been the old agenda when, when uh, you know, uh, BJP was formed since then, uh, Uniform Civil Code has been the uh, poll promise and, and mm. now at least, mm. uh, you know, uh, the, the opposition cannot claim that it is a jungla simply because in Uttarakhand they have already uh, tried to introduce that, they have tried to taste the waters, they have tried to get uh, various uh, opinions from various sections. And it has been the, you know, constitutional guarantee, you know, Article 44 of the Indian Constitution actually promises. And everywhere in the world, you know, wherever there is a democracy, the, the civil codes and civil rights are equal for all. They are not discriminated on the basis of religion. So, th there seems to be a very contradictory position when it comes to, you know, uh, we, we have this uh, discussion about uh, uniform, or rather I would like Correct. to call it common civil code, right. like you have a common criminal code. Uh, mm. So, so uh, I, I, this has been a promise. Sim similarly, one nation, one election. Original idea Gee. of having election on a regular interval was to be a cycle. Yeah. Now th that has been disturbed. Somehow, can can that be set right? Uh, that is the question. And mm. and uh, BJP is proposing something. Let's see how how they are going to do it constitutionally. The report okay. is already there okay. the, from the expert. Yeah, point taken. I'm sorry, I'll have to really wrap it up, Praful Ketkarji, but many thanks for joining us and putting the BGP's thank manifesto thank in perspective. Thank you. And still to come on DD India News Hour. Coming up next, this is what we have for you. Donald Trump attacks judge and prosecutors in his hush money case in last rally before he goes to trial. At least 19 killed after landslides hit Indonesia's Sulawesi Island. And since the Sudan conflict erupted, over 1.7 million people have fled the country.
of Tamil Nadu. Voting is our responsibility. This is a big fight between uh, BJP and uh, India Alliance. Will you vote? Ah, vote. We yeah, have power of democracy. This is a huge. BJP is trying her best, you know, for the past 10 years under the flagship of uh, Sri Narendra Modi Garden. The 2024 Lok Sabha polls in Tamil Nadu are witnessing the battle royale between DMK, AIA DMK, and the BJP. You're watching DD India News Hour. I'm Sakhal Button. Thanks for staying with us. Let's move on to the other big story. Iran's strikes on Israel has drawn wider global condemnation for Iran, sparking fears of escalating conflict in West Asia. India has urged immediate de-escalation in the wake of rising tensions between Iran and Israel, citing threats to regional peace. Meanwhile, British Prime Minister has confirmed military action against Iranian drones as Israel reports high intercept rate. While global leaders unite in condemning Iran's uh, aggression and have uh, they have at the same time intensified diplomatic efforts to defuse these tensions. Iran's retaliatory strikes on Israel has prompted swift condemnation from across the world. Reacting to rising tension in West Asia, India on Sunday stated that the hostilities between Israel and Iran threaten peace and security in the region. New Delhi has called for an immediate de-escalation, exercise of restraint, stepping back from violence. Iran's strike on Israel comes amid heightened tensions in the region and threatens to ignite further conflict with potentially far-reaching consequences. Iran launched more than 300 drones and missiles at Israel overnight and Israel said 99% of them were shot down. So far, we have intercepted and are continuing to, inter to intercept dozens of attack drones as well as cruise missiles and ballistic missiles outside of Israel's border. A number of Iranian missiles fell inside Israeli territory, cause causing minor damage to a military base with no casualties. Only one little girl has been hurt and we hope she will be well. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said on Sunday that his military jets shot down a number of drones launched by Iran in its attack on Israel. I can confirm that our planes did shoot down a number of Iranian attack drones and I want to pay tribute to the bravery and professionalism of our pilots flying into the face of danger to protect civilians. Life returned to normalcy on Sunday in Tel Aviv, but the attack underscores the fragility of peace in the region. I'm just glad that nobody got hurt and that uh, we have a good defense system in Israel, but it, it shouldn't be like that at all. Like We shouldn't be living in fear. We shouldn't be attacked like that. Global leaders have swiftly condemned Iran's actions, emphasizing the need for restraint and diplomatic solutions to prevent further violence. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz warned Iran against further attacks on Israel. U.S. President Joe Biden reiterated his support and commitment to Israel's security. In a post, he has shown unwavering commitment to Israel's security against threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres posted in the X calling for an immediate cessation of these hostilities. He wrote, I strongly condemn the serious escalation represented by large-scale attack launched on Israel by Iran. The EU top diplomat Joseph Borrell in a post said the incident is a grave threat to regional security. Jordan called for de-escalation in the region and said it will lead to dangerous paths. The diplomatic efforts are underway to de-escalate tensions and prevent a further deterioration of the situation. International leaders have reiterated calls for restraint and dialogue, stressing the importance of finding peaceful solutions to the underlying conflicts fueling the violence in the region. Bureau report, DD India. And to understand the story further and its wider con uh, com uh, ramifications, we are joined by uh, Nick Harper from uh, Washington, D.C. to make us understand uh, Biden administration's uh, position on the Iran-Israel conflict. Uh, Nick, uh, good evening and good morning to you out there in Washington, I believe. So, uh, 
what exactly uh, is uh, now going forward uh, United States of America's position on the conflict, uh, especially uh, when Biden administration uh, talks about uh, the ironclad support. Uh, at the same time, he doesn't want to be obviously part of the conflict, but is he saying that he's going to back Israel militarily if need be going ahead? Good evening, Sakal. We are really, I guess, in a watching and waiting situation mm -hmm. at the moment. The U.S. waiting to see how Israel responds. And the messaging coming from Washington during the course of this morning is very much that it's up to Israel to decide. And whatever you, the, the Israel decides, the U.S. will back. However, we know privately that U.S. President Joe Biden, in a late night phone call with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, advised him not to retaliate, retaliate to okay. try and de-escalate the situation rather than inflaming it further. Also pushing the Prime Minister with the message that the U.S. does not intend to be involved in any uh, retaliatory strikes against Iran itself. Uh, we've also heard from the White House in just the last few minutes saying that that meeting, the G7 meeting, meeting has wrapped up. This okay. was a meeting that the US president said that he was aiming to convene. Uh, the message coming out of the back of this is that the leaders have condemned Iran's unprecedented attack against Israel. And the White House says that they have reaffirmed the G7's commitment to Israel's security. We are waiting okay. uh, further details, a potential readout from the White House uh, to give more details on what was discussed and whether uh, the seven countries decided on any action. Action. But what we do know is that that action will be diplomatic. Okay. It will not be military in nature. Mm -hmm. And working, looking at ways to how they can potentially react to Iran uh, over the coming days. But the U.S. saying very much at this stage it does not intend to get involved in retaliatory strikes against Iran. So, but it cannot be just pure posturing by a U.S. snake. If you could just help us make understand, uh, GS grouping combined. Uh, contamination of Iran and trying to diffuse the tension diplomatically. The question is that is that going to make up? Is that going to put any pressure on Iran? The diplomatic talk or di diplomatic pressure from G7 on Iran? Well, potentially not. We've seen well, potentially not, Sakal. I mean, we've seen years of condemnation from the West against Iran. And there is a real question and sense of criticism here in the United States from the Republicans attacking the Democratic president, Joe Biden, saying that he has failed to prevent these attacks. Uh, one uh, particular high profile Republican, the former national security adviser under Donald Trump, John Bolton, saying that this was a failure of deterrence by the US president, Joe Biden. Other top Republicans uh, saying that quite simply the Biden administration has been weak in its diplomatic policy against Iran over recent years. And that is why we have seen this unprecedented attack by Iran itself. We will continue to see this criticism, but you're right. Will this new round of condemnation be enough to prevent Iran from carrying out perhaps okay. similar attacks or another right. wave of attacks right. in the future? Nick, Nick, it is always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us from DC. Thank you. And uh, DD India correspondent Alex Kadir also reported a while back from Tel Aviv on the latest situation with regards to the Israel-Iran uh, conflict. Well, Israel now taking stock after what was an enormous barrage of drones and missiles targeting all across the country and remarkably little damage caused because we know that the vast majority of those drones and missiles were intercepted by a coalition of countries, including uh, the Israeli Air Force and Israeli Air Defenses, of course, but the United States Air Force, the British Royal Air Force, and perhaps surprisingly, the Jordanian Royal Air Force also involved in stopping those Iranian uh, weapons from reaching uh, Israeli territory. Now, we know uh, that out of uh, 185 drones, 36 cruise missiles and 110 ballistic missiles, only three of those, those powerful ballistic missiles made it through uh, to, uh, or I should say seven, made it through uh, to Israeli territory. 
hitting the airbase, the military airbase that launched those strikes against Iranian generals in Damascus just two weeks ago. So certainly that would have been a targeted, targeted strike. The concern now, of course, is one of escalation. There is fear that Israel will ret retaliate against Iran directly in a way that Iran has warned would generate an even more severe strike from Iranian forces. So clearly the concern not just in the region, not just in Israel, but around the world is that you could have an escalation between two nuclear capable countries. We've heard uh, an urging for de-escalation from the Ministry of External Affairs in India, from uh, the White House in Washington DC, saying that the US would not support a retaliation directly against Iran. We've had mixed messages from the War Cabinet, which uh, concluded a meeting not long ago. Benny Gantz, the uh, very prominent uh, and former political rival of Prime Minister Netanyahu, saying Israel will respond, quote, at a time that suits us. But the Culture and Sports Minister Mickey Zohar saying that that would be a weak response. So clearly tensions within the Israeli War Cabinet trying to figure out what that response will be. All eyes of the world on this region fearing that regional escalation. Alex Kadia in Tel Aviv reporting for DD India. And now moving on, uh, Hamas has rejected an Israeli ceasefire proposal saying it uh, had handed to mediators in Egypt and Qatar its response to the proposal it had received last Monday. And after more than six months of conflict with Israel in Gaza, the negotiations remain deadlocked with Hamas sticking to its demands that any agreement must end the conflict. Israel wants to secure the return of the hostages seized by Hamas in its October 7th attack that triggered the conflict but says it will not stop fighting until Hamas is destroyed as a military force. It also says it still plans to carry out an assault on the southern Gaza city of Rafah. Hamas says on Saturday it was ready to conclude a prisoners for hostages swap deal with Israel that would see the release of 133 hostages still believed to be held in Gaza in return for the hundreds of Palestinians jailed in Israel. There was no official Israeli comment on Hamas' response. Former U.S. President Donald Trump told his supporters during a rally on Saturday to, and I quote, have a good time watching his upcoming trial in New York, unquote, on Monday. The Republican presidential candidate says a gag order imposed on him meant to take away his constitutional rights to talk. Justice Juan McCann, who is overseeing the trial, imposed a gag order on Trump in March and extended the order on 1st of April at prosecutor's request. The order blocks Trump from speaking about witnesses concerning their participation in the case. Prosecutors have accused Trump of falsifying business records to hide a $130,000 payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 elections to buy her silence about an alleged sexual encounter with former U.S. President Donald Trump. See, two days from now, the entire world will witness the commencement of the very first Biden trial. They're all Biden trials. You know that, right? And I'm proud to do it for you. Have a good time watching. Have a good time watching. On Monday in New York City, I will be forced to sit fully gagged. I'm not allowed to talk. Can you believe it? They want to take away my constitutional right to talk. And from U.S. Uh, to U.N. The United Nations says more than 1.7 million people have now fled Sudan due to the conflict there. Many are now in South Sudan, Egypt, Chad and Ethiopia where they are des in desperate need of humanitarian aid. DD India's Patrick Oyet reports from South Sudan's capital, Juba. Fighting between Sudan armed forces and the paramilitary rapid support forces is continuing in Sudan. Every day, more Sudanese people are crossing into other countries fleeing violence at home. The East African regional body, known as Intergovernmental Authority on Development, says the only way out of the conflict is through a negotiated settlement. We hope, uh, as IGAD, that also we are working on that issue to solve that problem so that the region is at last peaceful and uh, uh, could concentrate in its role of solving conflicts, uh, solving their economic, problem, uh, economic development, uh, building infrastructure, building peace, and working also together uh, for an economic integration of the region. 
IGAD has appointed a South Sudanese lawyer to head the mediation team for the Sudan process. One South Sudanese political analyst says South Sudan is in a better position to head the search for peace for Sudan. IGAD need to make use of this position of a stalemate as a way of bringing the parties together so that there is going to be an aspect of resolving this problem. Or else, if there is not going to be that possible, then there is possibility of a long civil war that is going to affect Sudan. And that thing will have a very big impact on South Sudan. There are more than four parallel peace processes for Sudan now. IGAD is leading one process. The U.S. and Saudi Arabia are heading another one. There is also a Libyan-Turkish process and an effort led by Egypt and Chad, known as Neighbors of Sudan. We are with the resolution of the, of the IGAD. And if the IGAD changes its position, then it will sit again and decide what to do. Violence erupted in Sudan in April last year, and up to now there is still no clear plan to end the fighting. The Intergovernmental Authority on Development, the African Union, and the United Nations mission in South Sudan are urging members of the international community to speak with one voice, harmonize the peace processes, and find durable peace for Sudan. Patrick Oyet in Juba reporting for DD India. And uh, still to come on DD India News Hour, coming up next. Unknown gunmen strike again in Pakistan. Sarabjit Singh's killer killed in jail, shot dead in Lahore. Also, DRDO successfully conducts a MPAT GM weapon system developmental trials in Rajasthan. Russia takes control of another Ukrainian town in Donetsk region. India that invents. India that innovates. India that excites. India that invites. Land of possibility. Teeming with opportunities. Watch India Ideas. Each Thursday, 8 p.m. only on DD India. You're watching TD India News Hour. I'm Sakhil Bhatt. And uh, before we move on, let's do a quick recap of the headlines. In his ruling dispensation, the BJP releases its manifesto for parliamentary polls, promises one nation, one election and uniform civil code, as well as vision for India's future under the leadership of current Prime Minister Narendra Modi. World leaders denounce Iran's strikes on Israel. India urges immediate de-escalation and calls for diplomacy. UN Security Council to hold meeting at Israeli regime's request after Iran's strike. Israel presses to designate the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist outfit. Amir Sarfaraz, the man allegedly responsible for the Indian national Sarabjit Singh's murder in a Pakistani jail, was shot dead by unknown men in Lahore. Amir Sarfaraz, alias Tamba, is a Pakistani underworld don. He was convicted in jail for the murder of Indian prisoner and Indian national Sarabjit Singh way back in 2013. Defence Research and Development Organisation of India and the Indian Army have conducted successful trials of the indigenous man-portable anti-tank guided missile weapon system. It was a field evaluated in different flight configurations with the objective of proving the technology with high superiority. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has complimented the DRDO and the Indian Army for the successful trials of the system, terming it as an important step towards achieving self-reliance and advanced technology-based defense system development.
Well, as tensions escalate between Russia and Ukraine, the world holds its breath. The latest developments in the conflict are sending shortwaves across the globe. Have a look. In recent weeks, both Russia and Ukraine have engaged in military maneuvers, raising fears of a full-scale war. The situation remains highly volatile, with no clear path to peace in sight. Two people have been killed by Ukrainian strikes on the Russian-held parts of Ukraine's Kherson region, according to Russian-installed regional head Vladimir Saldo on Sunday. One more person has been wounded. Russia, in fact, took control of a Ukrainian town in the Donetsk area and pushed back the attacks of the Ukrainian army. On the same day, Ukraine attacked a Russian command post and other military targets. The Russian Ministry of Defense said that the Russian forces hit targets including Ukrainian artillery systems and electronic warfare base stations. Meanwhile, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said that Germany will supply a US-made Patriot air defense system and air defense missiles to Ukraine. Germany will provide us with an additional Patriot. Today, we agreed with Chancellor on this. We are also working with Germany on additional Irish T system, which is also a strong air defense system, and on missiles for our existing air defense system. We really feel German leadership thanks to this leadership. We will be able to save thousands of lives and give Ukraine more protection from Russian terror. The announcement comes at a critical time as Kiev struggles to defend its energy system from Russian bombardment. Amidst all this, diplomatic efforts are underway to find a solution to the crisis. As the situation unfolds, one thing remains certain. The need for swift and decisive action to prevent further escalation and bring about a peaceful resolution to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Bureau report... DD India. April 14th marks 10 years since uh, 276 girls were kidnapped from their school in Chibok in the northeastern Nigerian state of Borno. A decade since the abduction, dozens are still missing. Since the Chibok uh, kidnapping, uh, mass abductions by armed men, especially of school children, have become more frequent in Nigeria. At least 500 people were abducted in three incidents in March alone. DD India's uh, Ajay Mangot reports that the families of the Chibok girls have been living with the pain and hoping to reunite with them someday soon. Rebecca Samuel is looking at the only pictures left of her daughter Sarah, whom she last saw in 2014. Sarah was just 17 when Boko Haram kidnapped her along with 275 other girls from their school in northeastern Nigeria. We anticipated our daughter's return within a maximum of two years following her abduction. But the realization that it has been 10 years weighs heavily on our hearts. Every day we pray fervently for her safe return. Sarah's family is just one of many whose loved ones remain missing. They are worried about the government's inability to rescue them in the last decade. Campaigns and calls for the rescue of Sarah and the remaining Chibok girls who are still missing have slowed with each passing year and have been overshadowed by Nigeria's economic challenges and worsening insecurity as kidnappings for ransom have now become almost a daily occurrence. The kidnapping sparked global outcry on the emergence of the Bring Back Our Girls movement, which has been pushing for their rescue. Campaigners say 10 years is too long for the girls to still be unaccounted for. 10 years on, 185 of the girls have been rescued, released, or they escaped on their own. There are 91 girls that are still in abduction. So 10 years on, I am sad. We occupied, we sat in places, we sat in, in, in we did all sorts just to make sure that that issue um, did not go under. The fact that all the girls were not brought back is failure of government. The previous administration of President Muhammad Buhari had promised to rescue the girls, but failed to do so before the end of his tenure in May last year. The Bring Back Our Girls campaigners say the current government still needs to work on finding the remaining girls 
and ensure that their families are compensated. The Nigerian government under the Bola Tinubu administration still has the opportunity to say that it prioritizes the security and welfare of every Nigerian child. Second, to make a public commitment that they are going to do everything within their power and influence to make sure that all of the Chibo girls are brought back. The administration of President Tinubu is nearing its one-year mark, but he has not said much about the Chibok girls. He has, however, directed security forces to ensure that they tackle insecurity across the country and rescue all kidnapped victims. While the world may have moved on from the Chibok kidnappings, the families of the victims say hope is what keeps them going. The hope that we have is that as long as the girls are alive, we can meet again, no matter how long it takes. But no one knows when that could be. A Jack Mangut in Abuja reporting for DD India. Never ending wait for the families of those missing girls. And it's been over a decade now. And now on uh, News Hour, let's take a look at other stories also that are making news around the world. At least 19 people have been killed in landslides on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi on Sunday. The country's disaster mitigation agency rescue efforts are on for those reported missing. The region has been affected by intense rains, uh, displacing people and destroying homes. Spain was hit by unseasonal heat for April as temperatures hit 5 to 10 degrees about normal. The heat has been ushered in by a mass of warm air from Africa. In Portugal, temperatures are also higher than the usual for this time of the year, with thermometers hitting 29 degrees Celsius. At least 12 people died and more than 50 are still missing in a landslide in the Democratic Republic of Congo on Sunday. The heavy rainfall caused a ravine to collapse into a river. According to authorities, 12 bodies had been pulled from the rubble so far. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met with Chinese top legislator Hao Leiji and affirmed his position to develop long-standing ties with China, state media KCNA said on Sunday. Chinese top legislator Zhao Leiji concluded a goodwill tour in the country on Saturday. Zhao is the highest-ranking Chinese official to visit North Korea since 2018. The government of India gifted 35 ambulances and 66 school buses in various districts of Nepal. The keys of the vehicles uh, were handed over by Ambassador of India to Nepal, Naveen Srivastav, in the presence of Nepal's Finance Minister, Barsha Manpun. The ambassador stated during the event that this has been one of the long-standing initiatives of the Indian government under the Nepal-India Development Partnership. And still to come on DD India News are coming up next. Palak Gulia of India qualifies for 2024 Olympics. And in the Indian Premier League or IPL, blistering uh, knock from Phil Salt takes Kolkata Knight Riders to a comprehensive win against Lucknow Super Giants. As a cycle of accountability returns, the time has come when the biggest democracy chooses to write another chapter in its glorious history. Development, justice, regionalism, a big political canvas. Everything will be put to test in this mega battle for glory. DD India dissects what makes elections 2024 the battle royale in Indian politics. Data and analysis free from bias to help you understand why India matters. The Great Indian Election on weekdays at 8.30 p.m. only on TV India. Watching DD India News Hour, I'm Sakhal Bhatt and uh, moving on, let's have a quick look at some more news related to India's uh, poll campaigning. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a massive road show in Karnataka's uh, Mangalore region. Thousands gathered to welcome uh, Prime Minister 
Bhatia Janata Party has a stronghold in Karnataka and has won 25 out of the 28 seats in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. This time, state will go to polls in two phases. The 14 Lok Sabha segments in the southern parts on the state will vote on April 26 in the second phase. The remaining 14 constituencies in the northern parts will vote in the second phase on May 7 in the third phase. Congress General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi also held a meeting in Rajasthan's uh, Bhinmail on Sunday in support of the Web of Gelot, who will be contesting from the Jalur Lok Sabha seat. In the poll rally, Priyanka Gandhi targeted the ruling party. Uh, voting for the 12 seats in Rajasthan will be held in the first phase on, that is, April 19. The electoral battle for the Northwest Bengal three parliamentary seats of Jalpaiguri, Ali Purdwar and Kooch Bihar is speaking. Veteran Sine star and BJP National Campaign Committee member led a roadshow in the Jalpaiguri Lok Sabha seat in favor of the BJP candidate Jayanta Kumar Roy on Sunday. This is the first day the veteran actor has been seen in the campaigning fray during the ongoing elections, a day coinciding with the Bengali New Year. Roadshow saw a massive turnout of uh, both party. Uh, supporters and the film star admirers, that's Mithun Chakravarti, film, Indi very popular Indian film star, veteran film star. The three seats of the Northwest Bengal are going to polls on 19th of April in the first uh, of the seven phases of India's national elections. With the Lok Sabha elections just around the corner, Uttarakhand uh, is uh, bustling with political fervor and anticipation. DD India Siddharth Bhardwaj had an exclusive chat with the BJP's Haridwar constituency candidate Trivendra Singh Rawat. Listen in. Well, the election fervor is certainly gripping the country, and the state of Uttarakhand will go to polls on April 19 in single phase. Everyone is very excited to vote. And I'm here with Trivendra Singh Rawat, who will be contesting from the Haridwar constituency. What do you think about these elections? <laughs> और मान्य प्रधानमंत्री जी ने यह कहकर कि यह विकसित भारत का चुनाव है यह विकसित भारत के लिए चुनाव है उसको और ज्यादा इंटरेस्टिंग बना दिया है पूरा देश मान्य प्रधानमंत्री जी की तरफ देख रहा है बड़े उत्साह से देख रहा है कांखों से देख रहा है कि आखिर मोदी जी ने यह बात बोली है तो आखिर क्यों बोली है और इसलिए चुनाव जो है एक नए तरह का इस बार के चुनाव में जोश है लोगों में नया उत्साह है जो करंट 2014 में मुझे देखने को मिला था उसी तरह का करंट इस बार आम मतदाता में है तो निश्चित रूप से चुनाव बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग हो गया है व्हाट डू यू थिंक अबाउट द फर्स्ट टाइम वोटर्स एंड हाउ डू यू थिंक दे विल प्ले एन इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन कंट्रीब्यूटिंग टू द इलेक्शंस जो भी नव मतदाता है नए मतदाता है वो आज माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी से वेल कनेक्टेड है आ, मैं कहूं कि आज का यूथ माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी से बहुत ही गहरा लगाव महसूस करता है और आज जो जोश दिख रहा है आ, तमाम चुनाव में उसका बड़ा कारण युवा जोश है सो दैट वाज त्रिवेंद्र सिंह रावत हु इज फाइटिंग हु इज कॉन्टेस्टिंग फ्रॉम द हरिद्वार कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी and as the uttarakhand the state of uttarakhand will go to polls on april 19 everyone is very excited to go to polls which will further decide the future trajectory of the state with camera person manmohan this is siddharth bharadwaj reporting for dd india in uttarakhand the three parliamentary seats going to polls in the first of the seven phase general elections in the state of West Bengal also hold over 300 large and hundreds of small tea gardens. These form a vital part of the economy of Duar's region falling in the foothills of the Himalayas. Over 5 lakh tea workers uh, depend on them and for their livelihood and they are facing a range of challenges from low wages to their land rights. During the elections, they are pressing for their demands and seeking solutions to their problems from the political leadership. DD India's Gautam Roy reports from Jalpaiguri. There are over 300 large and hundreds of small tea gardens in Duar's area of Northwest Bengal, which has three parliamentary seats, Jalpaiguri, Alipur Duar and Kuj Bihar, going to polls on the 19th of this month. Over 5 lakh families depend on them for their livelihood, but multiple challenges confront them these days. In election time, they are looking to get their aspirations fulfilled by their political leaders. अब जमीन का पट्टा सब नहीं मिला है हम लोग का अभी तक और जो 
हम लोग का नहीं होता मजदूरी मिलने वाला था वो अभी तक नहीं मिला है थोड़ा कुछ तो दिक्कत होता ही है ढाई सौ में यार क्या होगा आज का आज का भाव में ढाई सौ रुपया में कुछ होगा उससे ज़्यादा होने से और अच्छा लड़का लड़की को पढ़ाने से होगा बीमारी बीमारी होने से कुछ बढ़िया होगा The region's tea industry overall faces challenges on these fronts. Workers' wages are stagnant and below minimum wage. There is discontent over workers' socio-economic conditions. The workers are seeking more welfare measures. Tea garden owners and companies complain of high costs, lower earnings, lower quality tea being smuggled in from across borders and being sold as high quality Indian tea. competition from other exporters in sri lanka and kenya over 12 large tea gardens have shut down due to unviability even climate change is posing a dire threat to the tea industry climate change comes in a big way in between say uh, last rain we have received in october after 6 month we received the first rainfall out here and that too also is not sufficient and as because there is no rainfall so we have to continuously run The irrigation set that adds up to your expenditure, and apart from that, uh, the prolonged dry period uh, attracts more pest and disease activity to the tea plantation. So that's an added problem. The political leadership, be it the Prime Minister Narendra Modi ruled central government or Mamata Banerjee's government in West Bengal, is aware of the issues. they have been coming up with solutions from time to time despite exchanging barbs over these matters but tea workers union leaders say a comprehensive approach with mutual understanding is needed to resolve matters the oh, plantation sector of india cannot run without some sorts of that supervision or monitoring or some sorts of policy backup because today we are in a globally open economy so our government policy is very much required along with some leverage of the major plantation states government's policy tea has been the traditional lifeblood of the doers economy for decades it's an industry in transition along with many other allied activities like timber tourism and others and it needs attention from policy makers in both delhi and in kolkata an election season that is what the expectation of all the people who are depending on it for its livelihood with camera person sumit dhuman gautam roy jalpaiguri dd india in other news uh, hindu devotee in the terai region of nepal are celebrating chaiti chhat Uh, this is a four day festival which is observed during the chaitra month of the hindu lunar calendar is uh, dedicated to worshiping the sun and the consort uh, and his consort chethi maya or the goddess of dawn the rituals the rituals include fasting offerings and bathing in rivers or water bodies at sunrise chethi Chhat is a time for spiritual renewal, community bonding, and cultural festivities believed to bring prosperity and blessings. With the festive mood in the air amidst various regions across India, the Mithila region is in India and uh, Nepal are celebrating uh, Jhur Sital festival as well. It is a it is a traditional festival celebrated particularly among the. mathly speaking communities people seek elders blessings for good health the ritual sees the elder apply cold mud on head of others to keep them cool and bless them with good health special food with numerous health benefits are also cooked to observe the festival you're watching the india news hour now time for some sports news regaining the uh, reigning asian uh, games champion uh, palak gulia she's a reigning asian champion clinched the bronze medal in women's uh, 10 meter air pistol event at the issf final olympic qualification championship in rio de janeiro city of brazil on sunday in the process she will uh, she also bagged uh, olympic quota for india the 18 year old palak finished with an overall score of 217.6 to finish third she has ensured that india will have full 
allocation in both rifle and pistol shooting events at Paris Olympics. Each country can obtain a maximum of 24 quotas in shooting for the Paris Olympics with eight available in rifle as many in pistol and shotgun events. Indian shooters have already secured the maximum 19 quotas available in rifle and pistol events. India's remaining four shooting quotas are in shotgun events. And uh, uh, switching focus to IPL or the Indian Premier League. A blistering knock uh, from Phil Salt uh, to Kolkata Knight Riders to a comprehensive win against Lucknow Super Giants on Sunday in Kolkata. Kolkata reached the target of 162 with 8 wickets in hand and 26 balls remaining. In reply, KKR lost 2 wickets early but Salt placed away in the power play to score unbeaten 89 of 47 deliveries into deflate the Lucknow Super Giants bowlers. At the other end, Shreyas did struggle for his usual rhythm, but he stayed there till the end, ensuring there were no hiccups. The bowling was mostly wayward for the visitors except Mohsen Khan, who was the only bright spot. He picked up 229, 2 for 29 in his four overs. Earlier in the day, Kolkata Knight Riders won the boss, uh, won the toss and opted to bowl. Michel Stark was good with new ball and also at the death while Sunil Narayan bowled another brilliant spell of 1 for 17. Building pressure on the Lucknow batting lineup, there wasn't enough intent to score quickly until it was too late, leaving Nicholas Puran with too much to do again. As a result, Lucknow notched up modest total of 161 for 7 in 20 overs. And that's all for this edition of DD India News Hour. But let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. You can connect with us on Facebook, that is X, formerly known as Twitter, and also reach us uh, on Instagram. We will be back with more news as it breaks here on DD India. I'm Sakalbat from all of us here in New Delhi. Thanks for watching DD India News Hour.